Keep on rocking the free world. Keep on rocking the free world. So, you all want to see my new house. Now, if you remember, a couple videos back I said, hey, if anyone out there spots anything, let me know. And I'd be open to looking at small motorhomes or possibly uh, homemade uh, converted cube vans or commercial vehicles of some sort. And Well, I had some suggestions, but uh, I ended up finding one myself on Craigslist, uh, just uh, less than two hours away by ferry. And uh, I gave you all a little glimpse of it in my last video. And it isn't quite a cube van, but it is a commercial vehicle. It is a step van, which are hugely popular for RV conversions and always have been. In fact, one of the first people I ever met when I was 15 years old living in his van, it was a step van. And it was one of the reasons I decided at that age, you know what, I'm going to do that one day. And here I am, finally, with a step van. Uh, I go to music festivals a lot, as all my long-term uh, viewers know, and uh, at, it's funny, when you go to music festivals and all the campers, or all the RVs and camper vans and, and all the mobile liveaboards are all parked there, the step vans are like a cult. They always stick together. You'll see all sorts of varied RVs parked across the campground, but then the step vans will all be together in one spot. It's like a, a little step van row. It's, it's really funny. Anyways, I was always a little bit envious of the step vans because they're such great platforms to make a, a house out of. They're basically a, it, it's the same as a Class A motorhome. The manufacturer builds the body and then plops it on a drivetrain. You can choose Ford or GM or Freightliner or whatever is available. And this one in particular is a Ford. It is a 2003 Utilimaster which is one of the most common ones you'll find on the road. This is the exact same van used by almost all of the FedEx fleet. So all the FedEx vans are the exact same model. Most of them are the same size as well. Uh, same drivetrain. Uh, some of the newer FedEx ones are a mix uh, gas hybrid, but of course I don't want a hybrid. It's not for my uses. Um, but uh, FedEx uses these, Pure Later uses these, uh, the Postal Service uses these, they're all over the place. I, I, I must drive by at least 10 a day of the Postal Vans and the FedEx Vans, and now I start noticing them everywhere, of course. They're used by companies uh, everywhere. Uh, this particular one was not used by FedEx or any of the big companies. This one was used by a small coffee company on Vancouver Island for local light delivery. So it had a very light usage before the next guy came and bought it and started converting it into a motorhome. And like I said, I wanted something that was already somewhat done. So I didn't have to do all the insulating and wiring and all that sort of stuff. So he did all the uh, legwork. Now, then he went and met the wrong woman who apparently doesn't like camping. So he sold the vehicle to this sweet lady over on Vancouver Island in Nanaimo and then uh, that lady's uh, husband passed away right after she bought this so she never got any use out of it except believe it or not she used this to drive to the grocery store and get groceries once in a while <laughs> so when I bought it from her a couple weeks ago it was exactly like she bought it a year ago she never used it for anything other than hauling groceries home so now she took the money of course and uh, it's gone to buy a smaller car anyhow it is not too long it is actually only about a foot longer than my old BT Cruiser. Now, you go, you know, you gotta weigh the pros and cons of things. Um, here, where I'm parked right now, for example, this is perfectly fine. Uh, it won't quite fit in between a meter, so that, you know, I have to, there's some trade offs. I've got a little more space, but now I have to take two meters if I park places legally. Um, and it's obviously not as convenient for backing into single stalls and parking lots and stuff. So my habits have to change a little bit, but hey, you win some, you lose some. So you can't, you know, if it was mine from scratch, I would have bought one a couple feet shorter, but, but it is what it is. So I will deal with it. It's certainly not the, the uh, largest one that I've ever owned. So I just dealt with ICBC, that's our insurance agency. Remember here in BC, license, insurance, and registration is all run by the government. It's the same agency, so everyone has to get the license plates and get their insurance from the same place. So what I did is I had had a, a provincial inspection done on it, passed the inspection, 
and had it converted from commercial registration to proper motorhome registration, which is very important. It's the first thing I wanted to do. The previous owner, for some reason, did not do it. And if you leave it as commercial registration, your insurance is more expensive. The ferry fares were almost double. <laughs> and of course, you're subject to random roadblocks, commercial inspection demands, and, uh, and you don't have there's no legal rights in it. Even if you call it a motorhome, it's not a motorhome. As long as that registration says commercial, it is not an RV. So that's just not a good thing. So I wanted it as a motorhome immediately and I got it done. It is in absolutely perfect shape. That's just shadows from the tree there. There isn't, there really isn't a scratch on it. The, uh, the, the paint is shiny. There's no dents on it whatsoever. And this is why I love step vans as opposed to a regular cube van that has a van or normal van front end. Is the door is massive and I don't have to waste any space back here for an RV door because this is the front door now it's in a state of construction because I'm going to be working on this obviously for many many months to finish the conversion like I said this is a this is a Ford but you can pop your head uh, you know in the windows of any step van out there and um, it might be Ford, it might be GM, it doesn't matter, it's the same body, it's the same company. This is a Ford V10, it's the same as my BT Cruiser, so I'm familiar with this engine, I love it. Um, I, I, I prefer the Ford V10 over the GMs just because I have experience with them, and uh, they're the most common for these vehicles as well. Uh, I know that uh, they have GM versions, and you can get diesel versions too, but I'm not a, I, I drive a diesel van for work every day, and I don't like diesel. Uh, <laughs> it's stinky, it's noisy, and only one out of 10 gas stations, or on average, sells diesel. I just, I find it such a pain in the ass. I, I want my personal vehicle to be gas. And when I'm driving this, by the way, I drive, because it's really nice and warm today. It was over 20 degrees, so. I'm in my t-shirt driving with the door locked open. It's the best thing ever. And I got my, I got a stereo up here. So I got my music on, door open, and I'm not getting any, uh, you know, stinky diesel fumes and it's not noisy it's 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 a nice quiet ride well as far as the step van goes it's a quiet ride starts and runs like a champ Ike when I bought it literally five minutes after I paid for it and I was waiting for the ferry back to Vancouver you see it's got these big lockers at the back and and it has this big residential uh, looks like an Ikea closet of some sort I'm not sure anyhow that's all coming out now he has he did put in a Nice stainless steel sink, a commercial paper towel dispenser, which is awesome. And I'm keeping the lockers that are up here at the front for food storage and stuff. And uh, as far as a stove goes, he just used a little camping stove here on this shelf. He must have been really tall because it's really high up. I don't like that. So this is all coming out. This old antique dresser is coming out. My girlfriend's taking that. She wants that for her place. So beautiful. Get rid of that. Already got rid of the closet that was over here, and now it's just my pile of clothes until I build in a computer workstation in the corner with a, with a bar stool. There was two bar stools that came with this van, actually, so I'll be utilizing those. The shower, of course. It's a nice big shower, and it is completely full of my stuff. So, not being used until, uh, until I get uh, everything organized here. And the bathroom, or the other part of the bathroom, is the is a composting toilet this is cute and all but <laughs> i'm not keeping this i mean he, he he loved his metal work and everything and i have no idea what this choice of material was but anyways i'm not going to have it like this i'm going to be putting a proper rv stove and uh, a 12 volt fridge in this corner and the toilet will be moved to right here directly across from the shower with a door that opens and connects the two so now this entire area is the bathroom including the sink so you've got a big private washroom Anyhow, you know, this is all under construction. As you can see, the last week or so, uh, my friend Vince and I have been busy using his table saw, and uh, I've been running to Home Depot buying wood, and I repurposed some of the original guys, uh, the original owner's wood, and we made this little home theater with a pull-down screen for a ceiling projector, which I have on the, on the roof. Turns out I don't, I don't even need the screen because the back roll-up door has an awesome screen on it, which works just fine. And uh, it's, a, it's one of those 
uh, screens, when I have the back door open and you're at the beach or whatever, a nice day like today, um, it lets all the sunlight in, but people can't really see in, but you can see out. It's a great screen. So that rolls up and down as well. But uh, that's my screen. I've always had those speakers just sitting at a friend's house, so I figured I'll utilize them for this. I It already had a Dickinson... <clears throat> Uh, the P12000, the larger propane fireplace. So I may just keep that. Uh, it's, you know, these things are nowhere as warm as a wood stove. Not not by far. I mean, if I go up to the ski hills in the middle of winter, like December, January, and it's well below freezing, uh, you need more than that. Um, a wood stove is, is optimal. But I mean, this is already here and these are $1,400 stoves. So I'm not going to just rip it out. But what I did do is I went and bought myself a catalytic, uh, the Olympian Wave, uh, the Wave 8 catalytic heater so that is uh, a little pricey but uh, basically a Mr. Buddy heater on steroids for permanent installation so I'm going to be installing that soon as have it um, wall mounted for now but I have not done the propane yet that's something that's coming within the next few weeks so this little shelf here is coming out uh, as you all know I dislike windows so I'm gonna be doing some I've already got blackout curtains I'm gonna I'm gonna make a a nice cover around the windows for that, a nice valance, and uh, I'll work on the window security ideas I have for uh, the future. This bench is the water tank underneath with 12 volt pumps, so it's obviously not going anywhere, but I will pad it and have a backing for seating because everyone likes to sit here. And once that stupid shelf is gone, I'll be able to do that. And again, that'll be my workstation. And over here on this wall, so the bathroom will go right to that window, so there'll be a wall there. Over here, I'm going to be putting a ladder up to the roof and a boat hatch right there to get on the roof for a roof seating. I do not want exterior access to the roof, so I will be blocking the ladder on the outside and I'll be putting a ladder on the inside. So, it is... Oh, yeah, the bed. It had a stupid single bed. That's up like, it was up like that high, a single bed. So I don't like beds up high. I like beds down below where you can sit down, it's comfy, it's like a couch. It's much more inviting, and it makes the, the room feel huge. It is already like seven and a half feet in here, so I got lots of room. Uh, so uh, built a, a twin bed and went to a sleep country, Canada. Only the best for the new house. And I bought a nice new Sealy mattress, and it is perfect. My girlfriend and I have uh, nice, very comfortable sleeps in here with this. And the uh, storage underneath, and of course it lifts up. So we put it on a hinge so I can get underneath for storage. So this is my new baby. This is going to be a, a hell of a project. I have done lots of uh, motorhome. Uh, I, they're not conversions, I would say. I just change motorhomes to the way I want them. So this one I'm gonna be doing obviously a little more than that he's already got the basics down but i'm going to be changing a lot and modifying the hell out of it once i get all the woodwork done the table built over here and uh you know all the stuff i need to build over here the wall for the bathroom and little cabinets here and there uh, once that's all done then i go into the decorating and finishing it off and covering things with either the fabric i want or maybe maybe vinyl wrap the walls with with nice graphics or maybe just keep it simple and minimalistic. I'm not sure yet. It's it's all a work in progress, but this is how I work. I am very stoked about this. Uh, it's going to be in a. It's already been insulated and <laughs> expensive paneling. It's a shame. I'm going to cover it all up, but I I don't want the wood theme in this fan. And uh, going to work on the ceiling. It already has a fantastic fan. And actually, when I came in tonight uh, after work, the front cab was nice and toasty. I opened the door, but it was nice and cool back here because that thing was running because it's on a thermostat. So it got warm enough for it to turn itself on while I was at work today. Now, here's the best part. Are you ready for this? Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, that's right. Seven batteries. <laughs> but you might be going, wait a minute, there's more than seven charge controllers here. Where's all the solar panels? Well, on the roof. All right, up here he's got four panels and one, I guess he just had an ex, this, one of these little Coleman's lying around, these little extra 20 waters. But he's got uh, 40, 40, 40, and 160 up there. That's a nice roof. Look at all the real estate. So I'm gonna obviously be changing this. Anyhow, that's, uh, 
There's still more solar solar charge controllers there. Look at them all. The meter right there. So, there they are. There is an extra eight 40 watt solar panels, eight of them. And he has them on really long cords. So obviously what he was doing, oh, he'd park in the shade and then run these out to the sun when he's out camping. For my purposes, obviously being mostly an urban dweller, I'm never gonna use that. So I'm gonna permanently install all those panels on the roof, all the way around the roof possibly into a railing design that I'm going to have manufactured. So yes, I have power, 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 power. <laughs> I don't even know what to do with this power. Watching, watching uh, movies with the subwoofer going and the big screen TV every night with my girlfriend and every time I wake up in the morning I check the battery and it's like it hasn't even been touched. So, <laughs> uh, is there a generator? No, because I probably will never need one. That's my base vehicle, this is what I get to work with now. All the expensive stuff is already done, so it's really just about moving things around and decorating, which is the stuff I really like to do. I don't like to deal with electrical water systems and all that sort of stuff, so uh, it, it's basically exactly what I was looking for. It might be a little longer than I wanted, I'll deal with it. If I have to park a block away to get something from 7-Eleven, so keep on rocking in the free 